Well, good morning. Hello, my name is Bruce Ehrlich, also known as Mr. B, and this is the 6th, 7th, and 8th grade Sunday school class. Now, as you can see, we're hanging out with the goats today. So if you don't already have something to drink, and maybe a snack, we're having, uh, I think the, the cereal to have when you're hanging out with goats is uh, dried oat cereal. They even like it. But the first thing we like to do in this class is pray. Thank you, Lord, for being here with us this morning. Thank you for these little goats and for the beautiful day. Thank you for your holy word. Thank you for your sacrifice of your holy son, the perfect lamb of God who took away the sins of the world. Bless now the reading of your word, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so got a little story for you. Get on the right page here. Here we go. Uh, our story today, it says, uh, talk about mom. Okay, so my mom had a, well, she, she, she loved her kids, of course, but she loved her grandkids too. And she always said about my daughter, Christina, that Christina could do anything she put her mind to. And I, I think that's true. Christina is, in my opinion, you know, I'm a little biased. She's my daughter. Uh, she's smart. She's pretty. She can do anything she wants. She's, she's great that way. And, you know, uh, her husband, Micah, my son-in-law, you know, he's just about as smart as you can get. He's a mechanical genius. And, of course, now that means that our grandkids, my grandkids, my wife and I, Cheryl and I's grandkids, are the smartest and the best and the most handsome and the most beautiful kids in the whole world. At least that's what I think. Um, so where am I going with this? Well, sometimes in life, we tend to love our kids uh, or love our grandkids, or in my mom's case, her great grandkids, so much that it's, it's not a good thing. We'll see how that works out a little bit later, though. So, so the, the thing it is, though, is we don't want to love anyone or anything in this life more than we love God. God has to come first. So today's lesson, uh, we're going to start out with a reading for you from Romans 8, 32 through 36. We're going to be reading from Cheryl's Bible. And this is an NIV. And Romans 8, 32 through 36 says, He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously, remember that word grace, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who is he that condemns? Christ Jesus, who died. More than that, who was raised to life is, we like to circle that word is in this class, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. Okay, we'll see how that works out here in just a minute. Um, got a little uh, definition for you. Now, we, we started this thing last week called the names of God or the names of Jesus. And this is, this is a name of God. It's called Jehovah. You may have heard that word before, Jehovah. And this one is Jehovah Jireh, and there's a whole bunch of them, and we'll uh, we'll maybe get to those here in a minute. Um, well, not today, uh, but Jehovah Jeho Jehovah, I'll say it right, Jehovah Jireh, means the Lord will 
provide. Now, it also means in the mountain of the Lord, it will be seen. And we'll see how that works out here in just a second. But the, the, the fact that the Lord will provide, not that the Lord, as of the writing of this particular uh, section of the Bible, um, not as though the Lord did provide, but the Lord will provide. See, it's a promise. It's a covenant. Um, and so uh, his name gets into this. Uh, we got a class statement for you. Uh, we can trust the God of the Bible to provide us with his all-encompassing wisdom, continual provision, and eternal grace. Remember that word grace. We're going to get to that in just a minute here. Got a reading from you from, uh, I'm calling it Jen's Bible. Uh, my wife's best friend, Jen, gave me this. It's actually a, a Torah. But uh, sometimes when you want to look at some stuff from the Old Testament, you can find some really cool stuff in here. And we're going to be reading uh, Genesis. Uh, what are we going to be reading? Oh, yeah. Genesis 1. No, 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 no. Genesis 22. 22, 1 through 6. Here we go. See if we can do this. And it happened after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham. And he replied, here I am. And he said, please take your son, your only one whom you love, Isaac, and go to the land of Moriah. Remember that Moriah thing. That's going to be a big deal in this lesson. And go to the land of Moriah. Bring him up there as an offering upon one of the mountains, which I shall tell you. So Abraham woke up early in the morning and saddled his donkey. He took his two young men with him, the servants, and Isaac, his son. He split the wood for the offering and stood up and went to the place of which God had spoken to him. On the third day, Abraham raised his eyes and perceived the place from afar. And Abraham said to, the young, to his young men, Stay here by yourselves with the donkey, while I and the lad go yonder. We will worship, and we will return to you. And Abraham took the wood for the offering and placed it on Isaac his son, he took in his hand the fire and the knife, and the two of them went together. All right, so now this is kind of a study Bible, so it has a lot of notes. It's got the Hebrew too, which doesn't do me much good because I don't read Hebrew yet, but maybe maybe someday, who knows. Um, but it's got a cool note in here, and we're going to look at the word tested. In Hebrew... You know, we, we, get, we get our English words from all different places, uh, Latin, Hebrew, um, Aramaic, all kinds of stuff. But anyway, this, uh, this Hebrew word that they use for tested in Genesis, because this was written in Hebrew originally. The Hebrew word for tested in Genesis 22.1 says here as um, from the word a banner. You all know what a banner is. It, it, it's like a flag at the top of a pole. The armies used to carry banners into war with them in the old days. Um, so uh, the word tested comes from the word a banner that flies high above in an army or a ship. Hence the verse would be rendered, And God elevated Abraham trial upon trial. Greatness after greatness. So, see, we're, we're kind of upside down on this whole thing because of our sin nature. When, when God tests us or puts us through trials, we think of it as a bad thing. And, you know, a lot of times it hurts or you lose stuff or you have to give up on stuff that you really love and say, you know what, God, you're more important to me than these people or this stuff or whatever. I put you first and I obey you first. But with God, from his perspective, this is, this is our glorification. God blesses us with these trials 
and he increases he he magnifies the his glory in us this is this is amazing this is this is pretty special all right so I've got a reading from you from my 18th birthday bible my parents gave me this bible on my 18th birthday and we're looking at hebrews um there's a lot of cool stuff in hebrews uh, this is again from the uh, the hall of faith or some people call it the hall of fame of the bible but we're in hebrews 11 and we're at verses 17 through 19 and it says by faith abraham when he was tried or tested offered up isaac and he that received the promises offered up his only begotten son of whom it is said that in isaac thy seed shall be called accounting that god was able to raise him up even from the dead from whence also he perceived him in a figure and we'll see how that works out in just a second this is real important um we have let's see what we have oh we have a quote we have a quote for you today this quote is from Warren Wearsby, American pastor, Bible teacher, conference speaker, and prolific writer of Christian literature and theological works. How about that? And he says, now this is, this is, this is a brain twister, so you got to hang on here. I'll read it slow, so listen careful. In our universe, in our universe, there is God, and there are people and things. We are made so that we should worship God, love people, and use things. However, if we worship ourselves, in other words, put ourselves first, we will ignore God, start loving things, and begin to use people. That's not good. Um, got another reading for you. This time from Cheryl's Bible. It's a life application study Bible. Study Bible is a good thing. Highly recommend it to you. We're going to be looking at Genesis 22, verses 7 and 8. And it says, Isaac spoke up and said to his father Abraham, Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied, the fire and the wood are here, Isaac said, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? That's a question that you'll hear echoing down through the ages. We'll see how that works out, though, in just a second here. Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. Okay, now, like I said, this is the study Bible, so we've got a little note here that I want to read to you. Yeah. They ask, why did God ask Abraham to perform human sacrifice? Pagan nations practiced human sacrifice at that time, but God uh, later condemned it as a terrible sin, which didn't keep the Israelites from practicing it later on after that too. God did not want Isaac to die, but he wanted Abraham to sacrifice Isaac in his heart. So it would be clear that Abraham loved God more than he loved his promised and long-awaited son. God was testing Abraham. The purpose of testing is to strengthen our character and deepen our commitment to God and his perfect timing. Through this difficult experience, Abraham strengthened his commitment to obey God. He also learned about God's ability to provide. All right. So now we have a class note. Oh, you know what? We need a drum roll, but I don't have my drum out here. Didn't have a cymbal. That'll work. Class note. Ta-da! 
there is an outcropping of stone just on the edge of Mount Moriah. We'll see how this works out here in just a second. Um, where Jesus, God's son, God's only son, the son whom God loved. We heard about that just a second ago. Anyway, Jesus carried the wood of the sacrifice just as Isaac carried the wood of the sacrifice. Jesus carried the cross. Jesus carried the cross through Jerusalem, which we'll see where that was in just a second, to the outcropping of stone called Calvary. Now, Calvary has another name. The other name for Calvary is Golgotha, which was a site immediately or just outside of Israel where Jesus was crucified. Mount Calvary is from the Latin C-A-L-V-A-R-I-A-E. And that means the place of a skull, um, which is where we get the word Golgotha, too, if you want to track that down. Um, the other name, let's see, Calvary or Golgotha. The other name that uh, for that escarpment, uh, there's a good word for you, escarpment. It's for an outcropping. You can see in the side of the stone face. The stone face, there's like a drop off and there's this solid stone thing there and there's all these big holes in it. And it just so happens that if you look at it from down below, what you see is these big holes that make a face. And it looks just like a skull. It's got sockets for the eyes and the nose and what looks kind of like a mouth. And that's why it's also called the place of a skull. Wow. So we have a reading from you, uh, for you. And this time we're going to read from Mom's Old Bible. Great Grandma Fern. And we have John, the Gospel of John. Chapter 1, verse 29. Um, the next day, John seeth Jesus coming unto him, and he saith, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. All right. So I got a definition word for you. We haven't had this one in here before. This is a new one for you. And the, the word is atonement. And in this class, I like to mispronounce it and say at one mint. Uh, atonement is, for the purposes of this class anyway, is restoration or reconciliation of the relationship between mankind and God based on a sacrifice. Now, I cannot sacrifice myself to satisfy, satisfy my sin debt with God. Um, Jesus, also known as Yeshua, allowed himself to be sacrificed in my place. All right. Um, we got a reading for you from Genesis 22. And we are going to be in verses 9 through 14. And it says... When they reached the place God had told him about, Abraham built an altar. And we did that word altar last week. Uh, an altar is a place of worship. And it's also a place of sacrifice. So Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Now I want you to notice, this isn't in my notes, but I... I, I so I studied this week and watched videos and, and read commentaries and, and it kept coming back over and over again. Isaac was not such a little guy at this point. He was pretty strong, pretty good sized guy. He carried all that firewood on his back. He wasn't a little tiny kid. And um, remember, Abraham is pretty old. He rode the donkey. He walked the last little bit. They made a three-day, at least a three-day journey out of what was some other people could have done in less time. Um, so he's old. And 
the point is Isaac didn't have to go along with this thing. He didn't have, he, he could have easily put up a fuss. He could easily run away. He could easily overpower, you know, old Abraham here. But he allowed, and this is real important, he was on to, he was agreeing with the covenant and the promise. He understood that God's word is more important than anything. And when God promises something, it's guaranteed. Now, God had promised that uh, from Isaac, he would raise up a great nation. So Isaac believed the promise that was given to Abraham. Abraham believed the promise that was given to him by God. That's a covenant. We talked about, um, you know, a promise. I could make a promise to someone else. Uh, I'm promising to do an action. They don't have to do anything. We talked about uh, a covenant between two people, like marriage, where the husband promises to do certain things um, and his wife promises to do certain things. It's a covenant between two people. But then there's this, this hierarchy of promises. And the greatest promise of all is the covenant promise between God and humanity, where God promises to do certain things. And humanity has a part in that. We have a responsibility uh, to become involved in that uh, also. But God's promise, when God makes a covenant promise like this, it is guaranteed. Uh, we can work with him. We can agree with him. We can obey him. There's that key word, obey. And then we become a part of that promise. Okay? So, we were reading, when I interrupted myself, Abraham built an altar. And there, and arranged the wood on it, he bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar, on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. Notice twice, before it was once. Um, there's a lot to that, if you want to look into it. Here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Can you trust God? Can you let God take care of your parents, um, your kids, your grandkids, your in-laws? Can you trust God with that? It's hard. It's hard because you want to you want to help everybody. You want to make everything work out right, especially when you get older. Um, but you just have to trust God and lay it in his hands. Give it up. My wife uh, grew up. Uh, her best friend's mom used to, used to always say, just give it up. Just trust God. Okay? It's good advice. Uh, Abraham looked up. And there in a thicket, it's like a shrub, he saw a ram, it's a, it's a male sheep, caught by the horns. He went over, that's important because remember, Jesus is the lamb that takes away the sin of the world. He was an adult, he was a male. So, so this is a representative, God's providing. He went over and took the ram, and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. Now this is a substitutionary thing. This is from the Old Testament. You can study this all you want. There's a lot of information on how in the old days they used to sacrifice animals in place of the firstborn son. And that comes all the way from Egypt. So a whole bunch of... I could have done 10 lessons on this little section today, but thankfully we cut it down quite a bit here for you. So Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide. And to this day, it is said, on the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. So there's a lot of history with Mount Moriah. You can go back and look it up. Um, 
Mount Moriah was the place where Abraham sacrificed his son. Mount Moriah was the place where uh, the angel of death was bringing destruction on the city of Jerusalem. And uh, there was a special place there, you can look it up, uh, where the angel was stayed and uh, David offered a sacrifice. Uh, on that same place, uh, our Savior was crucified. Uh, he walked through that place, carrying the cross, uh, was crucified outside of time, uh, outside of town, sorry. Okay, got a drum roll. Not much of a drum roll, it's a plastic table, you know, we're outside. Okay, um, speeding ticket scenario. So, so this is a Mr. B thing, you know, and it's, uh, I drive pretty slow nowadays, but I was young once. So, so let's just say, for example, um, Mr. B is going too fast. Maybe it's a 20 mile an hour zone and Mr. B is going 35, let's say. So that's not good. So how does this work out when I get pulled over by the police officer? There's this thing called justice and then there's mercy, and then there's grace. Now, justice would be if Mr. B gets a ticket, all right? So everybody knows about that. Mercy, though, mercy is where the officer decides to give Mr. B a warning, and I don't get a ticket. I deserved a ticket, but I don't get one, okay? So I don't get what I deserve, that's mercy. Now there's this other thing that's above and beyond mercy, and that's called grace. Grace is when the officer pulls Mr. B over, he gives me a warning, and then we get to talking, and he gives me two Super Bowl tickets. <laughs> wow. All right, so that's something I don't deserve. That's, that's incredible. So, but we got a memory verse card for you. Let's see. Yep. Okay. Memory verse card. Today's memory verse is from James. I don't know if you can see that. James 1.12. And James 1.12 says, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive. I love that word, shall. He shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised there's that promise thing again. The Lord hath promised to them that love him. James 1, 12. All right. So we'll be looking at that this week. Uh, we've got some acronyms for you. Our favorite class acronyms are ACTS. A is for adoration. These are types of prayer. Adoration is when I say, Thank you, Lord, that you're pure and holy and perfect and eternal and all-powerful. That's adoration. Uh, confession. I confess, Lord, that I am a sinful man and I live in a nation of sinful people. Please help me to repent of my sin. Help me to turn around and turn away from the bad things that I've been doing and to follow you and to obey you. Then we have Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving uh, is one of my favorite types of prayer. Thank you, Lord, for the sunshine. Thank you, Lord, for Jesus, our Savior, who died in my place and took my sins on him and took them all away from me. Thank you for all the blessings you give us every day. Thank you for my wife, Cheryl. Thank you for my daughter, Christina, my son-in-law, Micah, my granddaughter, Brooklyn Ray Lynn, and my son. Uh, thank you for all my friends. Thank you for Pastor Mike. Thank you for all the wonderful people you've put in my life, the people that you call me to pray about. Thank you for everything you've blessed me with. Um, then we have supplication. See, we're already getting into supplication there when we start praying for people. I can thank God for my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, um, my friends' kids, 
and then I can pray for them as God leads me. Sometimes uh, God will say, hey, you need to pray for um, so-and-so, whoever it might be that night or that day, and, and all of a sudden I'll just start praying for them. Some of, some of the kids that I've known from many, many years ago, that God just says, hey, you need to pray for so-and-so today, and, and so that's what we do, you know, that's supplication. Then we also have our acronym for JOY. Now, joy is all about priorities, and we've been talking about priorities kind of off and on today. Uh, that's mostly what the lesson's about, and that is getting it right. You know, not letting your kids or your grandkids or your parents or your brothers or sisters become your whole life. Uh, maybe you've got other things in your life that are causing problems that you're maybe focusing on too much. I don't know what they are. Could be video games. Could be relationships, you know, friendships with people that are leading you astray. Whatever it is, if you're focusing more on that than you are on your relationship with God, that's a problem. That's a problem. And you need, we need, all of us, I need to deal with that on a daily basis. So how do we have joy? We put Jesus first. Put Jesus first. Others second. And yourself third. Okay? So we got a class roundup for you. Uh, don't be afraid to trust God. Don't ever be afraid to trust God. Not the God of the Bible. Uh, if the Bible says it, take it to the bank. It's real. It's true. We can trust him. It's his covenant. The Bible is God's covenant book with all those who will obey him. Okay? Surrender everything you are and everything you have to God and to his control. Obey God knowing, knowing, believing that God is in control of all things. God doesn't recommend things in his covenant book, the Bible. He commands. He commands. We need to obey as Abraham did if we are to be included in his promises. We should pray. Thank you, Lord, for the time we've had together today. Thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for the birds that are singing. We adore you, Lord. We recognize that you have all authority at all times, and you're in control of all things. I want to thank you again for the time we have in the Bible. Thank you for the opportunity we have to read your holy word, to understand what you're commanding us to do, and the ability to confess our sins, turn from our ways, and repent, and accept your ways, and learn more about you. Bless the reading of your word this week, we pray. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, have a good week.